Um, just gonna record now. All right, here we go. Okay, right. so we'll make a start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Super Studio 2021, the launch of the competition, as well as the reading of the brief. Let me introduce myself. My name is Hiram Altabai. I'm the Vice President of SONA Competitions and Events. And I am joined today by Susan and Wei, who are the creative directors of Super Studio. So I'll let them just say hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan. Hi, I'm Wei. Great. And well, I'm also uh, joined here today with um, members from the Institute staff, which is Maddie and Claudia. Let them say hi to you. Hi. Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to Super Studio 2021, reading the brief. Um, before we begin, in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. So to begin, what is Super Studio? For those who have not participated yet in the previous year, Super Studio is a conceptual design challenge for students of the built environment. Through this experience, we want to bring students together to challenge themselves, to have fun, to learn, and to connect with their peers and design professionals. In the brief we will reveal today, the deliverables we ask you to meet have been said to be achievable in a week. I want to stress to students this experience is supposed to be enjoyable. Take your time to work around other commitments and enjoy the process of developing your design. So next slide, please, Maddie. So here we just have the timeline of the week for Super Studio. Um, and we have included in the Super Studio program opportunities for you to dive deeper into the themes of the brief to inspire you and to help develop your design. So these activities are also available on the website for you to view. Continuing on, Manny. So as part of um, the key activities throughout the week, we do have virtual mentoring sessions. So all participants are encouraged to take advantage of the mentoring sessions. We have two sessions available and you can select the time that suits you when you register for Super Studio. These sessions are virtual and we have mentors, mentors from all over Australia who you can connect to. This is a great opportunity to talk for your ideas and get some feedback and ask questions. And now I'm also excited to introduce that we have speakers for the competition to help um, inspire you. So the design Inspirational talks are another great way to explore the themes of the brief and spark creativity. These sessions you can come along to and hear from some inspiring speakers. We have live presentations on Monday 10th and Wednesday, uh, Monday, May 10th and Wednesday, May 12th. Plus we will have sharing, um, plus we'll be sharing uh, recorded presentations as well. So pre-recordings. All the information for this will be on the Super Studio website for you to access. It's recommended you try and come along to these sessions and check out the pre-recordings that are also available. So let me just introduce the speakers that we have. So on Monday 10, as so of Monday 10 of May, we will hear from Luke Atelier. So Luke Hayward. Um, Luke will be will reflect on the role of empathy in architectural practice for operating across cultures and borders. He will also examine ways um, identities defined and involved by context and events. And so on Monday, we will also share pre-recordings as well. Um, these are recording presentations from Kieran Wong, um, who's from the Fulcrum Agency and Samantha uh, Ratnam, who is uh, MLC for the Northern Metropolitan and the leader of the Victorian Greens. So, next, please, Maddie. Great. And on Wednesday, 12th of May, um, we also have Dr. Gary Preslin, who uh, 
um, who is specifically referenced the 2020 Super, Super Studio Brief and will discuss the intricate ways in which identity is connected to place and how they differ so um, markedly from each other. Um, we also have uh, Master Mel Dodd. Um, Mel's practice-based research quickly engages with urban placemaking. And we have a pre-recording from Dr. Tyson Jung Kaporta, who is um, an author, academic, educator, and indigenous thinker and maker, as well as an art critic, uh, researcher, and a poet. So these design day talks, um, as you notice that the majority of them are outside of the field of design, design and architecture, but really um, these speakers have been carefully selected in relation to the concept of the brief and to share their ideas and thoughts to help spark creativity for participants. So moving on. So prizes, okay, so the national prize, um, is three thousand dollars so but there's um local prizes um for each state which is organized differently for each of the states so for there will be a winner selected in each of the states and the winners from all, all those um states will then be um put into a uh, national judging and one winner will be selected from those states and that and that winner will receive the national prize of three thousand dollars okay now i'd like to introduce the uh creative directors so we have susan ung susan ung was a registered practicing architect in geelong melbourne and byron bay for 15 years before entering academia where she is in her 23rd year of teaching research and academic leadership through her teaching and research susan is a champion of socially consciousness architecture inclusive design and interprofessional education susan is the founder of the consortium chair of interculture dialogue through design um, which is known as id ide um, established in 2010 sustainable rural um, built environments srb e established in 2019 a global community designed toward that acts as a collaborative education platform and research network consisting of students, researchers, academics, and industry professionals. The IDIDE SRBE team is particularly vested in meaningful engagement in participatory design with vulnerable and underrepresented communities around the world and addressing the imbalances between rural and urban environments and orienting these concerns towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Next, we have Wei Ya. Wei, Wei is a principal at Hayball and he leads practice-based research and design. With over 20 years of architectural practice experience, Wei has worked on prominent and award-winning public and private sector projects on varying scales across Australia, Southeast Asia. In Southeast Asia. Currently, Wei serves as a jury for the AIA International Chapters 2021 International Chapter Architecture Awards. During his undergraduate years, Wei was the recipient of the University Medal from the University of Newcastle, um, the NSW AIA Graduate Prize, and was the second recipient of the AIA Student Prize for Advancement of Architecture in 2000. So now, um, we will be moving into the reading of the brief. So the creative directors and myself have worked hard to develop the brief. And it is our hope that um, participants will be able to engage with the brief and be able to develop a design proposal um, whilst responding to um, this brief. And now I will hand it over to the creative directors, Susan Wei, to present the 2021 Super Studio Brief. So, Susan, thank you. Thank you, Aramal, for that introduction. I'm just waiting for the brief to come up, everyone. But um, I'm really, really delighted to be here. And I uh, was very, very um, honored to be invited to be part of the creative director team. 
it's been challenging from our end as well, we are working with a timeline, but particularly challenging also working with some of these really complex concepts that are revolving around um, all of us today. And the, the two words that form the title of the brief or the, the theme of the brief, which is evolving identity, they came from a round table of the SONA committee group who brainstormed the things that they wanted to imbue into this year's competition. So the two words evolving and identity really um, put together uh, have formed the essence and the genesis of the brief this year. The word evolving is about change and growth. It's not just about change. It has to have growth along with it. And identity is a very complex term and complex um, uh, concept. And um, I think it's, it's not a new one. It's been around for age, you know, ages, but certainly it, um, it reminds us of having a sense and a connection to place, to people, to country, and to ourselves and to others. So just reading two uh, very quick quotes at the start to uh, whet your appetite. Identity is never static, always in the making and never made. And the second, being a fish out of water is tough, but that is how you evolve. The vision and hope for the brief. This year's vision coincides with the 90th anniversary of the Australian Institute of Architects. As stated by Alice Hampson, the Institute's national president, we'll be looking back on how Australian architecture has shaped our cities and communities and looking forwards to the bright future for architects and built environments throughout Australia and beyond. We'll reflect on what we've learned, what we've come to value and what remains to be done. SONA and the Australian Institute of Architects message for 2021 is the strength to do more. This has inspired Super Studios 2021 vision for enlightened recognition of evolving identity along with empathy and diversity. It's our hope that participants will share stories about personal and community identity, and in doing so, grow collective capacity and strength towards doing more for planetary resilience and aligning of conscious practice in the advancement of architecture education. Super Studio 2021 challenges participants to engage with the concept of evolving identity that resonates with contemporary Australian architecture, renowned for inventiveness, climate consciousness, essential beauty, resilience, sensitivity to landscape and connection to country. Concepts of evolving identity may speak to an individual, a group, and or a country's culture, heritage, and history in relation to architecture and the built environment in Australia and beyond. A little bit of preamble, just to give you, um, I guess, to remind us of the great land that we live in and operate in and work in, and the context that is Australia. Australia is home to the world's oldest continuous cultures. There are Australians among us who identify with more than 270 ancestries. This nation continues to draw immigrants now numbering approximately 7 million from across the world. We are a truly diverse nation made up of people with identities connected to First Nations and Indigenous heritage, colonial history and migrant cultures. All in all, a variegated nascent identity. The recently published book by Arc Tangle 2020, Architecture of Coexistence and Building Pluralism, asks how architecture can shape an open mind and inclusive society. Architecture of Coexistence offers a truly interdisciplinary perspective on a very timely subject, building pluralism which means designing for a respectful inclusion of different cultural needs, practices, and traditions. Designing with pl pluralistic lenses allows us to see culture in detail and perhaps have a view of whether culture shapes architecture or architecture shapes culture. Either way, 
a dynamic and symbiotic relationship exists that stems from our sense of self, others and community alongside our sense of belonging to place or country. I'll invite Wei to read the um, to read um, the rest of the brief. Wei, thank you, Susan, and thank you, to, uh, Aramel, for making the introductions. Um, I will I will cover two parts. One is provocation, and one is more towards uh, the competition brief program. So, for provocation, it's more about where do we go, and in particular, how do uh, what we have done as well is to collate uh, a bunch of uh, speakers to increase the currency of dialogue that we have of our built environment. So it's very important to look into uh, the, the speakers' uh, notes and in particular, their visions and their perspectives of country. And that is the starting point of the provocation in which I will in fact start by reading two quotes, one from um, Peter Ducker, which is an Austrian uh, economist, and uh, our very own Susan Ang. For Peter, he, he talks about, don't pre as a quote, don't predict the future. Just look outside the window and see what's visible, but not seen. Although cultural diversity is critical, we also need to consider other forms of diversity, including sexuality, gender, age, and ageism religion, disability, geography, and so forth. Ideas of interculturality, interconnectivity, and intergenerationality are needed to mend architecture thinking within architecture practice." Unquote. Um, as for Susan, she asks you to look outside your window. You only see what you can see. You do not see what you cannot see. Is it because it does not exist or is it because you do not have the lenses to see? There are three broad questions and themes that we ask you to have a think about and they are organized and structured within three general questions about people, practice and place, which is also country. For people, what does inclusivity mean in architecture? Where and how can architecture honor diversity? What does social cohesion and community resilience look like in architecture? How can we create feelings of identity and belonging while also embracing diversity and evolving identities? The next, which is practice. We ask you to consider how can a nation promote a culture of empathy? How can the practice of architecture in the, in the future reflect Australians' evolving identity and embrace diversity? The third place, country. How can cultural identity and diversity shaped by our environments? How can architecture for the future reflect and embrace the concept of identity in connection to people and country? I'm going to read the next portion, which is the program. Program, Super Studio 2021 would like you to explore a vision of how architecture for the future may reflect the concept of evolving identity in connection to people, practice, and country. Reflecting upon self, take the opportunity to rethink the future of education and practice working together. And ideas of belonging and unity in diversity. Participants are to select a community context anywhere in Australia or beyond Australia that portrays a contemporary identity and create a proposition that affords engagement of community plus architecture. Begin with creating a framework for your proposition or engagement frame from an identity list A plus an issue of dissent of dissension to list B plus spatial context list C. From each of the lists in the table below, form which to conceptualize your vision of visual, tangible, and spatial identities. The lists are not exhaustive, and participants may discuss adding to the list in discussion with their mentors. 
we ask you to specifically consider how architecture honors an ancient connection to land. We encourage you to explore using holistic, sensory, perceptive responses that demonstrate how architectures mediate social and cultural advancement and to explain, express, and visualize how a future that affords safety and widens spatial participations of people across all gender, all race, all age, and all abilities is envisioned. We challenge you to explore a future that embraces change and bridges differences using design as a force for community empowerment and resilience and above all speaks to evolving identity in this ancient land. I'll pass on to Armel to go through the submission requirements. Okay, so just the cover as well with the brief, um, we've also provided images to help spark ideas um, as part of the brief here. And here we have the judging criteria, which will, allow, which will let the participants read and which they'll refer to while developing their submissions. Uh, with the submission requirements, um, I'm just gonna read. So there's just two parts to submission requirement. There's an online submission and the deadline for this is Saturday the 15th of May, 9 a.m. And there's also a presentation which is on the 15th of May, 3 p.m. Um, and also, there's also an option um, only if people who aren't able to do live presentations, though it's highly encouraged that um, um, people attend the live presentations and do their presentation of their submission. Um, there's also an um, option provided to them to do a pre-recording. Um, but other than that, um, all that information is on the brief um, for the participants to read. Now to just finish up towards the end, I want to just ask um, Susan and Wei about their advice they would just give to the students um, regarding responding to the brief and their proposals. So maybe we'll start with Susan. Thanks again, um, Aramal. I hope that um, the sound of the brief has started to prick your uh, imagination, everyone. It really is a very, very um, deep and meaningful um, probe that we've asked you to delve into because identity, culture, heritage, you know, all these things about belonging, etc. They're not particularly surface level um, ideas. They're usually ideas that reside quite deep they are very deep seated. So their deep dive is how I would regard them. Um, so may, um, I guess for me, you know, it's, it's about um, asking you or inspiring you to uh, touch on all these different uh, points of references and maybe looking at how you can join the dots in some of these ways with some of the keywords, perhaps just picking out the keywords initially that resonate with you because there are quite a number and you might not be able to address all of them. But I would suggest that you pick out maybe the top three or the top five that you feel that you could um, immediately have a response to or have something to say about it. That would probably be a good start. Um, I think the criteria is um, very uh, comprehensive, the judging criteria. We're looking at responses that primarily our creative uh, responses. Creative submissions is probably our primary um, expectation. But at the same time, there is, um, with a lot of competition briefs, there is a discipline and rigor that is required to actually reading the detail of the brief and actually responding to the brief, at least to what the brief has actually directed you to. So the first criteria being being, being able to respond criteria creatively to the theme of evolving identity. And we've simply given you a, you know, a sprinkling of what that um, evolving identity could mean or could be, but you're very, very welcome to actually define your own ways of what evolving identity mean. And certainly it's not about one person, it's about the group that you work with. So I, I imagine many of you are entering the competition as a group because as a group, you can actually achieve more um, and then 
with everything creative, there is a design approach. There is a methodology. There is, as I said, a rigor threaded right through the work that we do in architecture design and anything creative. So usually there's a genesis, there is a response, and there is an approach. So if you are able to articulate that approach, an approach is like a recipe to me. A recipe means it's replicable. Someone can see that you unpack the steps that you have taken. And sometimes you have to do it as a reverse engineering kind of approach. In other words, you, you rush to the, you know, to the fore, but then you have to go back a few steps to see what you have done and reflecting on those steps. And the last three um, criteria is about uniqueness and innovative that talks to creativeness, that we're looking for unique outcomes, unique ways of looking at things. Um, a lot of the brief talked about being able to see, but having the right lenses to see. So what is it that you can see that, you, that, that might be unique to you and that you're able to articulate and express that? And the culture of empathy and narrative, that's a really hard one, I, I would say. For me, it's a really hard one. The culture of empathy is something that we would like to um, see all future architects and future practitioners and educators go forward with because we, are, we need it more and more. You know, this is a more connected world ever more so after COVID and the pandemic has actually turned our world upside down. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, it is empathy that allows us to pick ourselves up and, you know, continue our lives and continue making um, a difference. And the last is very straightforward. I think that's about communication and the clarity of the ideas, the clarity of the expression and the clarity of all the components that make the sum of your submission. Um, I might stop there and invite Wei to add his views on um, how participants might um, approach the brief, Wei. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Um, I guess um, the, the whole formalization of the brief is really a partnership between academia and practice. And very much so, the, you know, the uh, flow between uh, both parties really enforce and in fact uh, evolve our way that we practice and the way that we deal with uh, pedagogy in teaching. And, the, and what, uh, as creative directors, what we are hoping for are the mentors to be part of this uh, journey. Because at the end of the day, you know, the complexity of the brief is not uh, a simple task. And with uh, a different perspective being afforded through mentors could in fact help to clarify and in fact develop dialogues between both parties. And it will be very fruitful for both the mentors and the students involved to find their ways of telling their stories. And what we are looking for in fact creativity in terms of not only being very being insightful about what you appreciate from the brief but more importantly how you expresses it uh, both in practice which is through the drawings you make through the communication you make verbally or any other form and that's what it will be uh, a fruitful exercise that we are in fact looking forward to and in particular the processes that you have in terms of, uh, of not only developing your insight, but how you represent those processes could also be an important aspect of expression that could be a way to not only communicate what you want, but also to communicate uh, more importantly, the, the intention that you have through your design. Um, our, our program that we have created is in fact uh, a mosaic and if you look at uh, the three columns, uh, which is list A, list B, and list C, list A covers uh, you know, the three unique identities that we have uh, within our country, which is namely um, you know, identity connected to First Nation and Indigenous heritage, uh, identity connected to colonial history, identity connected to migrant history. And perhaps what we probably wish to communicate as well is that no, the, it's a mosaic of uh, possibilities in which you can choose to take one, two, three, or none. And in certain ways, there's a, there's a thinking process that is required to figure out whether do you subscribe, which, uh, what, uh, what form of practice do you subscribe? And we are looking forward to how you, you know, find that uh, conversation within 
and express it as a as a you know, as a proposition. And the the rest of the other two are to help guide towards a spatial representation or any other form. So I guess that will uh, no, that's my input in trying to uh, expand the brief a little bit more. Great. Thank you, Susan and Wei, um, for sharing your insight and your thoughts. Much appreciated. Um, and if you notice in the chat, um, Maddie has um, provided the link now to the competition brief. So this will also be available on the website, but you can download this now so you can have a copy of it. Um, so you'll find it in the chat. Now, um, for the remaining minutes, I would like to have an open forum um, for any questions from um, the participants, as well as I'm aware there's some mentors here as well, if they have any questions, but um, any questions, comments, and thoughts. So um, yeah, does anyone have any questions, comments, and thoughts about the brief? Okay. So we have one um, from Yi Cheng. Hello, Yi Cheng. Uh, so he asked, can I enter uh, alone? I might need help from Maddie from this one. I believe that you can. You can enter um, as a um, individual. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's fine. Um, we have an option to enter as an individual or um, yeah, we've got uh, options for teams up to four. So um, if you were wanting to be connected to a team, we might be able to help you out if you can um, let us know which university you're at. We can get in touch with your Sona rep. But um, yeah, absolutely. We've definitely got some um, individuals that have registered so far. So um, that's fine if that's what you'd like to do. Great. Thanks, Yi Cheng, for your question. Anyone else? Any thoughts, comments? You can write or use your mic. I have a little question. So yes. our team is three students from UQ, but one of our teammates is actually stuck in Canada because of COVID. For mm. the presentations, we know you can present live. It's at Griffith Gold Coast. Would it be okay if only two of us were able to make it to the presentations? Oh, I, yeah, it would be fine. Yeah, um, if as long as your team, you know, there's still representatives of your team to present, yeah, that'll be okay. Great, thank you. Um, so we have one from Scott in the chat, just a quick one. Is this to be treated like a real project or hypothetical? Maybe I'll leave Susan and Wei um, their interpretations, the Ray directors. We may have deferring uh, responses, I don't know, but I'll have a go first and definitely have a, have a try first. Um, I guess my thoughts uh, for the Super Studio competition each year is that it is a creative conceptual competition. Right. So for me, it would suggest that it would reside in the hypothetical because quite often hypothetical means it's um, you know, it's just a, it's a con concept. So concepts usually need a proof of concept or, you know, a bit of proof time. It also needs um, some testing um, evidence, empirical evidence sometimes to support it, etc. And in the time that you have give, been given, it's probably easier to be working in the hypothetical space, I would have thought. Mm. And just, yeah, just to add to Susan, because Superstore is the conceptual design competition. So the proposals are hypothetical, but you know, from experience as a student in previous super Studio, this is a competition that has no limits. So your proposal um, can be very uh, conceptual and doesn't need to really have that kind of um, yeah the reality uh, to it. Yeah, I will add that in in instances of hypothetical um, propositions instances, meaning they don't all have to be. Um, there are instances where hypothetical propositions are quite grounded in real, realism. So they are grounded and anchored in you know, real scenarios, uh, real contexts. Um, some, some of us find it easier to work with you know, a real context. 
um, and some of us might feel quite comfortable, equally comfortable, you know, without that that um, real context. So you can actually fabricate your own context. In other words, if this was a, a new world, for example, I think there is scope for you to consider this as a new world, a new world that was driven or powered on empathy, for example. Yeah, and maybe to extend a little bit more on that, um, the question will be what is real and what is hypothetical. In, in essence, as, uh, you know, as uh, creative people, what we are doing, we are actually not building any buildings, if you notice. We, we are people who uh, you know, put ideas forwards and in fact, push ideas around. Because if you think about an accountant, an accountant pushes numbers around. If you think about a lawyer, a lawyer pushes words around. And as architects, what we are in fact doing is we are pushing ideas and communicating ideas. So what is real and what is not, no, nobody really knows, but unless we hold a hammer and go to site and start building every bits and pieces of the building. So the, the, you know, the, the idea and how you communicate it is in fact more important uh, perhaps for a short competition like this. And we are looking at how you think about the team and how you make a propositions and how you in fact represent it. That's about ideas. Right, beautifully said way. And thank you Susan as well um, for your input. Um, uh, to answer Riku's question, if we were to add onto the list, the form framework, we need to get removed from the mentor. So um, in the brief, you notice there's a list A, list B and list C. Those that list is only a framework, so it's not it's not something that needs to be followed directly. So you have an opportunity to discuss with your mentor um, if there's anything you want to explore further, or if there's anything new that you want to explore. So um, you don't need to follow that framework. You can work with your mentor um, to add on to that list as well. So hopefully that answers your question, Riku. Okay, any final questions, comments and thoughts before we close session? No, hang on, we have a question here, sorry. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Um, hi, Marco. Uh, hi, hi, how are you going? Um, I guess, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not a participant, but I was a bit surprised about the brief. Um, uh, and, and I'm thinking uh, uh, how, you know, it would be hard to create something without having a context. Uh, because I think it really, uh, especially for architecture, uh, we don't create sculptures. We create something that is always fitting within uh, urban landscape. So I wonder if part of the brief is for, uh, you know, the team members to also find uh, the right ground for this creation to go on. Um, yeah. So. Just to add to that you know, question as well, Marco, so Toby also asked when the brief refers to community context, are we choosing a site? So when you're asking about you know, the context um, in response to those, both of those questions, it's up, it's up to the students to develop that proposal if they want to have um, the context involved that they can respond to. So the brief was um, just left to be, to have a lot of, um, Kind of freedom for the students to also form that what they want to um you know develop and post hopefully that answers um, can i just add the brief has stated that participants are to select a community context yeah. so there's that's the context the words there community context um i think that sort of indicates or points uh, participants into that direction that you conceive of a context that you feel you identify somewhere anywhere we've said anywhere in Australia or beyond Australia that portrays a contemporary identity so if there was some a context that you feel fits that that brief there then that might be where your context um, resides and you can work with that context Great, thanks, Marco. Um, so, Tobia, I hope sorry, that answers your question too. Uh, what 
and Susan's response. Um, we have from have another one about what guidelines are we following? Okay, so um, voila, so the reading of the brief, um, we just made an introduction to the whole competition, but this is recorded. And so through this recording, you'll find um, where the creative directors read through the brief and just explain um, what the participants um, will follow in terms of guidelines. You also have um, the reading of the brief available on the SONA website, as well as in this chat is too. So um, it was just sent a few um, minutes before, Let's share it again. Um, so that's made available. So in terms of the guidelines, you'd just be referring to this document. Okay, we're reaching end of the session. Um, I guess we'll just end it there. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always contact us. Um, um, I believe the details are on the Sona website. Um, but yes, so to answer Stefan's question, um, this recording will be available um, to view on the website, um, Stefan. So, oh, we have another few questions as well. Let me just go through this. Uh, thank you for putting this together. I appreciate the effort that has gone to the brief and competition as a whole. In regards to the mentors, will we know who they are before the virtual sessions and are they the same for the entire competition? Yes. Okay, so I keep um, turning back to the website. Um, you have all the list of mentors um, that will be part of the um, competition. Um, was there anything to add, Maddie, in terms of um, yeah, I just, um, I just want to, yeah, uh, stress what you just mentioned. All of the, we're trying to put all of the competition information onto the Super Studio website. So I'm just going to put the link in there now. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can go onto there. You'll be able to see all of the mentors that are participating. Um, you won't be able to choose your mentor. It's going to be random. So you'll connect to your virtual session, um, and we'll place you uh, with a mentor. Um, so you'll notice that there's mentors from all over Australia. So you could be, you know, partnered with someone from a different state. So it's it's going to be, um, yeah, a fun experience. So you can check out who they are on the website. Um, they're up there at the moment. Great, thank you, Manny. And just to answer um, another question, can Sona reps join? Um, unfortunately, no, Sona reps cannot join competition um, as they were um, involved in kind of the uh, part of the planning um, in their own state. So sorry to the sound of reps. Um, but yeah, just to close the session, um, looks like everyone getting excited. And as the vice president of um, Sona competition events, I just want to say I'm also very excited. A lot of work has been put for this um, great brief in the direction of this competition. So um, I'm looking forward, we're looking forward to you know, what the participants uh, produce and um, just the outcome of the competition. So I just like to say thank you very much everyone for your time and to our participants, good luck. Could I just add um, special thanks to both Susan and Wei for all of the time and effort they've put into creating this incredible brief um, and for their insights and advice given to all the participants today. Thank you very, very much. And we look forward to seeing what the students come up with. If you haven't registered yet, please ensure you do so by the deadline on Monday. And um, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Claudia, for those words. And um, good luck, everyone. Yep, good luck, everybody. Looking forward to looking at the final outcome. <laughs>